Why Twitch banned me? Dot dot dot. Essentially, soft banned me off their platform, and the reason why is so bizarre. I'm not actually sure this has ever happened to someone. In I feel the like me reacting to a video about why Twitch banned someone off their platform is like <laughs> it's like openly masturbating on stream. The, oh, the guy who switched to YouTube is watching another video about how Twitch had something bad happen to them? Shocker. Absolute shocker. <laughs> it's like, it, like, I feel like I, for some reason, every time Twitch has a down moment, I make a video about it because they do well. But it's gotten to the point where it's like, like, now anything that Twitch does that might be bad, it's like me just sitting there, like, kicking the shit out of them while they're already on the floor. I'm not trying to do that, is what I mean to say. I, you know, I'm, I'm still a user of the Twitch website. I don't mean to kick them every single time they are down forever and always. <laughs> All right, anyway, let's just watch. Let's just watch. Parity of Twitch. Now, when people usually get banned on Twitch, it's something generalized. We might not all agree with it. Like, for example, stream sniping, swatting, nudity, getting too drunk on stream. <laughs> Come on. Why you gotta do Mango like that? Why you, got, you don't gotta bring him into this. He's got a family. He has a kid. All right, he likes drinking at night. Sue him. He likes a couple of beers, maybe a dozen. Uh-oh, it's sake nights, and he drinks sake. 40, Friday, he's drinking a 40-ounce bottle of malt liquor. Like, really? This is a problem? Ignore the open bottle of vodka in the five blue moons on his desk. It's irrelevant. <laughs> he's getting a little sloshed. He's having a good time, not a long time, and I respect that. <laughs> It was a joke too. He like he was acting. You just <laughs> But the reason why Twitch gave me the boot is it's so confusing. I've actually spent the past couple days building this timeline to understand why exactly they did it. A lot of people want to know why because I made a tweet about it, not really giving any context. Feel free to follow me on that cesspit, by the way. So if you go into my Twitch channel now, you'll see that my channel is still up. It exists, but there's something missing. It's that it's that little sub button. That that little button that gives streamers like 90% of their income. It's not there anymore. You know? Yeah, dude, I will say it is embarrassing. <laughs> I never noticed it. Like, I never thought it was a big deal to have a partner badge. I And like, hear me out. Don't you guys think it's cringe when a streamer will always talk to the person with a partner badge in their chat? Like, their eyes lock on to them as if it is some romantic stream in Romeo and Juliet by Tchaikovsky is playing in the background. And they see someone with a partner badge. And all of a sudden, after ignoring chat for the past 15 minutes, they come alive. Oh my god! That's a partner badge! Welcome to my stream. I don't know wall every... You're saying says you. I actually don't know wall every dumbass YouTube partner who comes into my chat. I have never acknowledged a YouTube partner ever unless I watch their videos. Most of the time, I actually think they got the badge fraudulently too. All the partners who are typing in chat right now can vouch that I have dono walled them for months. <laughs> I've straight up ignored them. <laughs> Cause I don't know. I don't I don't fucking look, they're just they're just a dude who has a who have a badge. Shake Drizzle's dumbass should not have a badge because he released a Lee Sin montage 18 years ago, back when he was good at League and didn't smoke weed every single day of his life. I literally made you. You would be working with Armada, okay? Let's just agree that it would be mutual destruction, and I am the US, and you are Russia. Oh, Shake Drizzle's Russia, laugh at him, haha, <laughs> you're the evil people. <laughs> no, he fired me. Did he actually? God damn. You got fired and I hired you? I didn't know that. I remember when I first hired Shake Drizzle, he put in his bio who he would edit for and he put Zane before me. It was like it was like Zane, Ludwig, TF Blade. And I was, I was so mad at that. I was like, "Why the fuck are you putting Zane before me?" Like, what it come on. You earn top billing now. Thanks, buddy. You're my second favorite editor.
<laughs> behind me in my own edits, actually. Polite's third. Subs are a win-win. I get a cut, the big company gets a cut, and then you get a little emote next to your name. You get to spam emotes in chat, and there's a 5% chance that I'll actually read out your name. When Don't you tell Polite that. If Polite asks, he's second best. Subscribe. So the reason for my sub button disappearing, I got an email from Twitch a couple days ago. Dear Niall, Twitch is terminating your agreement Joe, I got effective you. immediately. Pursuant to section 4.2.7, appropriate conduct. Now, originally when I read that, I thought like, oh my God, did I say something bad on Twitch? D did I show like boobs or something? Ooh, I'm Frank Boobs! You did not employ appropriate- <laughs> What the fuck was that? What? What? <laughs> YouTube's such a funny website, dude. <laughs> it feels like you, when you watch YouTube, it's like like there's a little guy in the editing room who's like panicking and the room's on fire. And he's like, it's been 10 seconds since something out of left field has happened. We need backup. Or something. Ooh, I'm Frank Boobs. Saved. And then it's back to 10 seconds of... <laughs> you did not employ appropriate conduct when, after your partner application was denied by Twitch's EMEA partnerships team, you solicited Twitch's North America partnerships team to become a Twitch partner without disclosing such team the denial of your application by the EMEA partnership team. You're probably thinking, what does like any of that mean? Believe I think it means that you got rejected to become a partner by the European squad, and then you want to circumvent that rejection by going to the North American team, and the North American team accepted without conferring to their to their coworkers, which is probably how it works in a giant fucking corporation like Twitch, where they don't communicate across different sections. Believe me, I got like the Elder Scrolls moth priests to so have a look at it. It took them a couple weeks, but they deciphered it. Well, basically, Twitch is saying that I was denied partner mm -hmm. and then soliciting other means to get partner without telling them that I've been denied partner before. I love this wording, by the way, like the use of the word soliciting, acting like I paid off the Yakuza mob boss in a bathhouse to get someone topped off or something. If you don't know, by the way, with how Twitch works, uh, you can apply for partner, you can actually get denied, and then surprisingly, you can actually apply again. It's crazy. You've got to wait three to four weeks, it even says in the email themselves, but you can actually reapply once you're denied. If you're not a regular on my Twitch streams, I have applied for partner a lot and I've cried about it a lot. The very first time I applied was the 11th of April, 2021. And then a month later on the 10th of May, I got a reply basically saying, too many of your viewers are coming from external sites. They're not organic views from Twitch. Despite the fact that Twitch streamers themselves literally admit that growing on the platform solely from Twitch is pretty much impossible. Like, that's also like a great thing. Like, like, if, if, <laughs> wait, isn't that crazy? It's a wonderful thing if you have somebody on your platform who is bringing people to your website and introducing new viewers to the website. That's the dream. Like, how does growth happen on Twitch? Do do viewers just watch it and share it with other people? Like, is there trending? Like, how do you... Me. It doesn't. doesn't. You don't grow on Twitch. You don't grow. Okay. That's not how it works. Okay. Right. What you do is you grow on another platform. Okay. And then you bring them to Twitch. Got it. I can't believe that I look like such a piece of shit in this video and people let me film and release this video. I didn't shave. My hair looks so damn long. I don't think I showered for two days before this. I think I woke up and had to go because they do things in the morning because they're adults and I just showed up. I'm wearing a vasectomy hat that a viewer made. Interesting. You know, I read the email and I thought, I, I don't agree with it, but I get it, right? Big companies hate each other because that's space that they could be occupying. For example, YouTube despises TikTok. That's why you've got all these shorts being shilled everywhere I now. I don't get it's it. It's competition. So you know what? I took the L, didn't agree with it, but I kept on streaming. And then the 2nd of September- The that only reason that could make any sense to reject someone for having inorganic views is that you would have some assumption that the viewers might not be real humans, botted, it might be an embed on a website, that they're not real authentic viewers viewers who are actually engaging with the content. That's the only reason I could possibly conceive that would make sense for not allowing someone to become partner because the viewers aren't organic viewers. That same year, I applied again. The weird thing is though, it didn't take a month for them to reply. They actually replied the exact same day, essentially saying I was on the right track, but they couldn't offer a partnership despite me hitting all the goals. Keep in mind to get Twitch partner, you need to stream a total of 25 hours 
12 different days and then get an average of 75 viewers a stream. I did the first two time commitments and for someone that gets like, I think I get about an average of a thousand viewers a stream. I think I'm, I'm doing a little bit above and beyond 75 on average. So I thought, okay, I guess I'm on the right track. Sure, I streamed more. And the then- The Twitch requirements are funny, right? Cause the Twitch requirements, it's like, like the first two requirements are so easy. It's like, hey, be able to stand on just your left foot and then also be able to stand on just your right foot. Oh, and we also have a third requirement. You have to run a sub six minute mile. Good luck. And it's like, okay, well, if you're doing the fucking third one, the first two are a given. That We don't worry about streaming 12 different days. If you're averaging 75 average viewers, like, like you got it. You're good. That's all you really... <laughs> oh, you did 25 hours. Congratulations. <laughs> I swear to God, they put it in there. I swear to God, they do this. They put the first two in there because Twitch has gamified becoming a partner and growing as a creator in the, in a way that it has like a task bar and there's achievements like you're playing Xbox Live in 2015. And so they're like, congrats, you did one of the things. You streamed 25 hours. And meanwhile, it's a dude who's playing Warzone on his Xbox streaming directly to Twitch with an average of two viewers, his iPhone in his laptop. And he just, he was just live a lot. And they're like, good job, keep going. When the reality is like, you should stop. You, my brother in Christ, you should stop. You have a girlfriend and you are about to get broken up with. You need to readjust your life. Five viewers a stream. So I thought, okay, I guess I'm on the right track. Sure, I streamed more. And then on the 27th of September, I applied again, only to get a reply on the 8th of October saying the exact same thing. Like, I'm not even joking. It was a literal copy paste of the email that I got before. You're on the right track. We're not going to specify what track. I mean, it could be the 100 meter sprint or a baton relay, but you're doing good, kid. Keep it up. So I did keep it up whatever that means. I got more hours up. I even started streaming daily at one point, calling each day a day to grinding to partner. And then on the 7th of November, 2021, I applied for partner again. And I thought this time, surely I've been streaming pretty much daily. So many hours, so many viewers. It's all organic. I'm eating bio-organic fruit while I'm streaming. There's no way that they can deny me now. Mm -hmm. And some good news, they didn't deny me. They actually never replied to my email ever again. Usually when I applied to Twitch, it was either a month or the same day, but this was nothing, nothing at all. And the best thing as well, when you apply for partner, your application is put under review. You can't retract the application, cancel it, or apply for a new one. You're essentially stuck in purgatory, hoping someone at Twitch finds your application, like that scene in Harry Potter where the letters are scattered everywhere. Again, keep in mind as well, their email say at the bottom, it could take up to two weeks. I mean, at the time I was an affiliate, which isn't too bad. I still had the sub button, but I was missing out on really important features. For example, full access to Twitch's transcoding. If you don't know what that means, if you go onto a Twitch streamer and they're streaming at like, let's say 1080p and your internet can't handle that, you have the option to go into the settings and lower the quality for yourself. <laughs> Being anything less than a partner, it's not guaranteed to have that option. So sometimes I'd be streaming as an affiliate at 1080p, oh. 60 frames, and half the stream would dip because they complained that they couldn't actually watch the stream because it was so demanding on their Wi-Fi. So I, I forgot about that. That used to be a huge problem I had before I was a partner. People couldn't watch because their internet couldn't handle a 1080p stream. And sometimes in peak traffic, they don't offer any transcoding for affiliates. So you can't stream at peak hours, otherwise you just lose viewership. Why is that a limitation? I think just because of the, the processing power for that many streams at once, they just give priority to the partnered streams. I would essentially have to stream at a lower quality setting so more people could enjoy the content. So a few weeks passed and I thought to myself completely fairly, I'm not waiting around. They keep sending the exact same reason why I'm hitting all their goals. So I started to ask some YouTubers for help and they'd link me to their managers or their partners. And all of them were incredibly surprised that I hadn't become a partner yet. All I wanted to do was hopefully get through to someone at Twitch to directly ask them, why am I not getting partner? Why is my review now being put into purgatory instead of another copy paste denial? Again, keep in mind the application says it could be up to two weeks. We're in February now. February 2022, that's it has three been months. three months and not a single reply from Twitch. Okay, not a that's peak. tough. So in retrospect, I totally do not blame myself for asking for external support because Twitch obviously weren't going to do it on their end. I agree. I eventually got a management company to reach out to Twitch for me and I got partner for, for about a month and a half, two months. 
<laughs> and then they took it away again. Keep in mind, I haven't just been de-partnered. I've been de-everything. Like, I'm not even an affiliate anymore. I have no sub button. It's just such bizarre wording. Like, I solicited EMEA, which is, you know, the European sector of Twitch. And for that reason, we've revoked your ability to make money on the platform. You can still stream for free, of course. The best thing is their claim makes no sense. They said that I didn't disclose that my partner application had been denied because it wasn't denied. I was still waiting indefinitely for any kind of reply from Twitch. I was denied before, but again, Twitch, if you get denied partner, you are allowed to reapply. That is in your clause. I actually just think someone at Twitch hates them. <laughs> I, think, I, think I think there's one mf -er at Twitch who fucking hates Pyrocynical. Because it's a human. Obviously, right? Like, they don't automate any part of the process of becoming a partner. It's the same with becoming verified on Twitter. They had processes in the past that were um, more objective. But then when you make them objective, it opens up to too many people. And then you partner people who maybe you shouldn't have partnered or you verify people who maybe you shouldn't have. So both, like, Twitter and Twitch stopped doing that. Uh, and it's like, okay, now it needs to go through a human. And Twitch kind of stopped doing partnerships as a whole. Because there's a, if you don't know, there's a huge imbalance. You know how schools have a problem where they have way too many students compared to teachers and then it ends up being like one teacher per 40 students and there's way too much of a load on the teachers and they're not able to handle it? The same problem exists with streamers and partner managers. There are way more streamers than partner managers and they're not able to, to accurately, or, or they're not able to, take care of all their their partnered streamers well um which is a which is a major problem that they have uh and so i think i think they partner just less because of that i think the 75 average viewership is cap i think it's it's like okay you need to have like a, at least like 100 average viewers and then your content also has to be something that they think is appropriate enough and then you have to be someone who maybe has some sort of following on another platform. Like, you need more to your resume than just the three things that they say you need. I think that's cap. Those three things. Um, so that makes sense. And honestly, it is so go-aroundable. Like, like asking so, like a partner manager to help get you partner is so standard, I feel like. And so many people do that. Although I think it happens less. Remember back in the day, there'd be someone who signs to an esports team and they're like maybe a decent Clash of Clans player, but now they're on NRG and they'd have a partner badge on Twitch, even though they average 20 viewers. There's like a thousand people who have that same exact thing have happened to them with partner badges, even though they're not, they're not like streamers by any sense of the word. They're more like esports players who happen to be with a team. It's just connections. Yeah. I know a VTuber who averages 80 viewers and got partnered. I think their second application yeah, I, I think I I honestly think there's classes of content that it's easier to get verified or partnered for. I think VTuber is easier. Again, I don't blame myself for reaching out because we're in May now. I probably still wouldn't even have had a response if I didn't reach out to other people. I'm not really sure what Fair. I'm going to do for the foreseeable future. Thankfully, being a Twitch streamer isn't my main source of income because Jesus Christ, if it was, I'd be having a meltdown right now. And to be fair, streaming on Twitch, I can still interact with you guys directly, not just the comment section of a YouTube video where there's spam links everywhere. And as well, anything I stream on Twitch can be turned into a Pyro Live video. So, you know, th there's still a reason to stream there. I've considered it. I mean, I might start streaming on YouTube Gaming I just haven't really talked to many people about that yet. It's still kind of a fresh platform. I know you've got people like Ludwig that are on these fat multi-million dollar contracts. I'm not really too bothered about- But it's not even for the money, honestly. I think that the platform has a lot of value and it's very cool. Try it out, guys. It's really good over here. The water's warm. Not in this car. You know, like the video about that. I, I, I just kind of more want it to be a platform that I'm comfortable streaming on. Although, that, although that is a lot of money. The best case platform that I'm comfortable streaming on. Although, that, although that is Ludwig Augren's contract with YouTube gaming possibly worth thirty million dollars, according to Cutie Cinderella. <laughs> what a stupid fucking article. <laughs> <laughs> What a stupid fucking article. I didn't get 30 fucking million dollars. I didn't get close to 30 million dollars. 
That's how much Shroud got paid to go to fucking Mixer. You think I got paid that much to go to YouTube? Cutie said so. Cutie said it as a joke and then Dick Cerdo wrote an article about it because the people in there browse LSF, hit refresh on new, pop out 10 articles, and then all jerk each other's dicks and go home happy at 4 p.m. Fuck you mean? There's a reason he left out who wrote the article and on what website because they're both not reputable. It is a lot of money. The best case scenario, Twitch can like rectify this on their end because at the minute... I can't do anything. I'm soft locked. If I go to my achievement section, which is it was 29 million. Yeah, that's right. <laughs> that yep. Yeah, well, but not 30. All right, and I don't appreciate people keep who keep saying I can make 30 mil because it's a lie. It's 29, and that's it. Where you apply for affiliate and partner. <laughs> this is the best thing, right? The system thinks that I'm actually already partner, so I don't need to apply again. It's even got all this little confetti that shoots out and stuff. It, it's actually, it's insulting. It sucks because I jumped through all the hoops that Twitch wanted, and it just still wasn't good enough for them. And then grinding for partner for pretty much over a year, I get it yoinked off me two months later. And now, essentially, I can't make a cent off Twitch unless people directly donate from an external site. Also, I want to mention to anyone that actually is a Twitch sub and they just had their status yoinked, if you're part of the Discord server, don't worry. The mods there have done like a fantastic job you still got all your perks, your chats, all that kind of stuff. That won't be revoked from you for something Twitch has done. If you're still watching this video, I'll probably be live as soon as this goes out, just crying for a little bit, like boohoo. The millionaire can't get his money. I might even react to some stuff. I, I, I don't know. I'm just a bit confused at the minute. I really am. I'm just, I'm really happy that I didn't, you know, dedicate everything. A 90 minute stream? Who are you, me? What a short ass stream. Are you kidding me? To Twitch because man if I quit YouTube and became a Twitch streamer I would be gone right now so yeah thankfully I've, I've still got YouTube the main channel stuff I'm very happy I never left YouTube because oh my god the fact that you could have the th this isn't like a, a copyright claim I've streamed so much this month you guys actually can't flame me you guys actually cannot flame me here's the clip that they used to find your 30 million dollar number they're garbage now Okay, blink when it hits Ludwig's contract amount. 10 mil, 15 mil, 20 mil, 25 mil, 30 mil, 35 mil, 40 mil, 45 mil, 50 mil. Wait really more than 50 mil? <laughs> yeah. Yeah, this is journalism at its peak. When Cutie did a, a you googly for me, as if I had died in a funeral attire with smeared mascara. That's 